Hi, welcome back for a third episode of Growing Passion Fruit Vines from Seeds. It's day 149. I got some footage when I was taking a walk of a clover species that's kind of unique. It grows upright. They look like miniature trees uh, this close up. So I was thinking maybe that's the species that's not infesting my pot, but it's just growing there. You know, a lot of seeds blow up to my balcony and they land in there. You can kind of see it from here through the foliage. And it's curved because it got, you know, kind of bent or crushed by all these uh, passion fruit vines that are just way taller. So everything looks pretty healthy except for this little yellow uh, leafed one that's at the bottom. And I'm going to pull the clover right now. And later that little yellow one right next to it, the passion fruit vine that's just not doing well. And that's what it looks like. So I think it fell over a few times. That's why it's not upright. But the root hasn't really established itself well. So I guess when I pulled it, all the secondary roots broke. or Maybe it didn't really have uh, that many forks going out. So hardly any resistance to that. And I'll pull this one out. Um, I'm spinning this around. I moved it over to be on the Lazy Susan to give you a better look at everything. But this was kind of near the wall in position and just like the clover you know the root is very shallow I think because I baked this potting mix I didn't steam uh, the potting mix like I did with all my other pots where um, four pots of steamed soil became three um, after I steamed them in volume so that removed all the airspace this was just baked soil as you can see from the beginning of the first episode of the series so Maybe there's a lot of airspace in there and that little seedling, this one just never had enough contact with the soil. Um, it had a problem with water uptake, so it just never did well. Uh, other explanations are maybe there's some kind of biological warfare going on between the root systems. But you know, the others look pretty healthy, so I'm tending not to think that was it. It's day 157. And as one of you suggested last time, I better pull all the uh, other ones because this pot is only big enough really for one. I know from my honeydew series in 2013, I had a lot. I mean, this one requires a lot of pulling. So um, this one is much more established than that little one I just pulled out in the previous update. So that's what the root system looks like. And once they get deeper and deeper... You know, it just requires an incredible amount of force to pull these out. But you can see the leaves are sort of curled. And I don't really know why that is yet. I think maybe just not enough water or the, the soil is over salted. There's too much solutes in there, nutrients. After all, the potting mix that I use, um, it's supposed to be fertilized for a year. So it's probably got a lot of things in there, salts and uh, various nutrients. So... Maybe these plants just have a problem um, uptaking enough water. So I'm going to pat that down and pull out another one. So there's only three left after pulling out that one. And geez, this one really takes a lot of force to pull out. So yeah, basically made a big mess when that flew out. And as you can see, the root systems pretty developed in terms of you know secondary, tertiary roots going out like that. And the foliage looks healthy. It's kind of a pity to have to pull these out. But you can see that leaf at the top, the new one, it's three-pronged. So some of you were wondering, you know, how come the leaves don't look like uh, the passion fruit vine leaves in my area of, uh, for example, some southern states? You know, maybe that's why the leaves don't differentiate and become their final morphology until they've, you know, been growing for a few weeks. In this case, it's been a, a few months. So I'm pulling out the last one. So that's three of the major ones that were perfectly healthy up until this point. And that's the root system. So the second one was hardest to pull out. Uh, this one is kind of like the first. You know, it's got healthy foliage, but it's kind of droopy. It's not getting enough water for sure. The trigger pressure is kind of low. But otherwise than that, I mean, it's seemingly healthy it's getting all the nutrition it needed and I'm gonna cut those up 
do a little clean up pat down work and first things first I'm going to fertilize I'm going to take a crushed multivitamin to provide macronutrients and micronutrients so I eat one of these every day they really help with my eyesight if I don't take multivitamins then you know my eyes get tired I have contacts in all the time and you know it's just at the end of the day without vitamin supplementation um, you know my eyes just get tired and I can't see as well but if I have enough vitamins then everything's fine but anyway that's for me these are for my plants you know just one vitamin pill it's got a lot of calcium carbonate in it but I'm gonna spread the crushed powder I'm using a vice grip it's pretty fun to use these things were cheap at Lowe's uh, it's just that my old pair of pliers the one with the rubber orange handles that was all rusted and it didn't serve that much functionality this one has adjustability it's a fun tool um, right now I don't need it for anything else but I decided since I don't have another standard pair of pliers I might as well just use that to crush up my vitamin pill so the vitamin pill is mostly calcium carbonate and it's got a lot of things some I guess soluble some insoluble that need fats to dissolve um, in your stomach but anyway uh, I'll spread that out on the top so when I water from the top all the nutrients will percolate through the soil I'm taking these uh, plants that I just ripped up um, granted they took all of their micronutrients uh, secondary um, macronutrients and primary I guess from the soil only thing they got from the air was carbon dioxide that's how plants add a lot of mass you know they just keep absorbing carbon dioxide from the air through their stomata and undergo photosynthesis to make sugars and then after that basically they have the energy to use to make all the other compounds from the elements trace elements and minerals they absorb from the soil and their surroundings so I'm just gonna use this as a compost uh, it's gonna be kinda dry so I know it's not really like how most people make compost but I'll just keep it at the top like leaf litter see if anything interesting happens and water from the top but first I'm gonna add some miracle Grow singles Add half a packet. You know, this provides the three primary macronutrients. Um, before, I kind of thought there were just the three of, um, you know, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, uh, was it potassium compounds that have to be in usable form. But there's also other ones, you know, the calcium and the vitamin pill. That's also actually a macronutrient. And there are two other elements as well that I'll list. Um, but I'll just sprinkle this on the top and I guess this is actually better than using liquid fertilizer this way because uh, if you use liquid fertilizer it's really concentrated when you first get it on top so there's a tendency to splash even micro droplets that you can't really see unless you're looking really really close that would splash on the undersides or the sides or the tops of your leaves and then that would burn your leaves so I'm just gonna water with uh, my watering can from the top wash off the foliage thoroughly granted there is a leaf that's kinda touching you know uh, the freshly made you know detritus on the top but um, that one actually has a burn leaf end or maybe that's later in this video but yeah I'm just gonna water everything off wash the undersides of the leaves get rid of the dust or any potential mites or parasites it might be there although I don't think there are any right now it's a pretty robust plant I don't think there are any infestations so far so it's day 163 and I'm wondering why in the absence of anything pressing against this plant it insists on growing away from the Sun instead of towards it It shows no signs of corrective action I mean it has some new foliage but um, that's a two prong leaf that's been there for a long time and finally we have some three prong leaves um, tendrils to grab onto things there's nothing to grab on here and the leaf ends are kinda there's a loss of turgor pressure at the very tip of this primary vine shoot so I'm thinking this thing has a problem with there's either air space in the soil so the roots aren't absorbing enough water because I've been watering a lot or uh, the roots just need to go deeper you can see the back of a cotyledon actually down there in the middle so that's what the back looks like uh, my leaves are very healthy um, they're like molten wax on a hot day 
They're no longer super droopy, but I noticed that roots were growing into the watering tray. You could barely see two of them there. And I didn't get good footage with a flashlight later, but basically I looked there a few days later and after this copious watering, which I'm showing you right now, the water tray filled up and those roots started branching out and having secondary roots and forks in the watering tray. I didn't get footage of that. I kind of regret that, but... You know, I watered a lot and right afterwards the water kept overflowing so that's a huge hassle. It takes a lot of time for water to percolate through to get to the bottom. So on day 170 I got a cheap bin to collect overflow. I know what that looks like and it looks pretty gross but actually there's no smell of fungus not drowned in there. I didn't see any mosquito larva or anything. I don't think they can make it in such a concentrated thing. So I've got a foot long tendril. This thing is banging up against a flat wall, which has nothing to climb on. You can see the three-pronged leaf getting bigger. Maybe these are shade plants, kind of like the California wild grape, uh, under the canopy when they're young. So in, say, a riparian zone or a forest, you know, it just needs to have very big dark green leaves to photosynthesize and capture as much uh, indirect sun or you know, um, sun that does get through the canopy of the forest uh, when they're young before they can climb all the way up. So maybe these early leaves are just not suited for uh, full-on photosynthesis in the full sun. Maybe they'll get fried. But I'm going to turn this in the bin and I had to do that very gingerly because the Joshua tree was threatening to tear this up as I spun it. But I'm going to do this and see how the vine responds because it's just not behaving rationally. It keeps growing towards the door and it was like that way for all four of the healthy seedlings before. And you have plenty of video evidence of that. Um, they were all just growing away from the sun. So it's day 177. I over flooded the pot again and some of it ran off. But it, there's been a market improvement shown. An explosion of new leaves. So you can see here you know, I thought it would have trouble orienting all those old established leaves and medium-sized ones, but that's not the case. This thing's longer than my hand. It's kind of unsightly because of the wrinkles. It's kind of waffled on the edges. I think there's no recovery from that. So this is the oldest two-prong leaf, um, the one that I thought was a mutant. It's big and healthy, but I don't understand why it's making more, I guess. There's going to be that intermediate phase where it transitions from things very low on the base of the trunk or the base of the primary stem to where you know you have some of those two prongers and then you have three prongers like that the leaf edge is burned so that's a troubling development maybe it can't handle full sun um, this thing got impaled on the Joshua tree before I tied down the, th the primary vine with a piece of green string as you just saw so it has two holes on it, it actually broke the tips of those uh, Joshua tree leaves but I just kind of righted them without breaking them off. So you can see there's still a hydration problem. I'm thinking the roots and the water tray just have to fork out in all directions and just become more extensive. And we'll stop seeing that. I do kind of get the impression that some of these new medium sized leaves look very healthy, uh, healthier than the old ones in that they're not waffled or kind of uh, wavy on the edges. So maybe that's a consequence of me just watering so much that I've flushed out a lot of the solutes that are creating salty conditions in the soil and you know the yellow liquid in the overflow bin that's got a lot of nutrients in it so I'm not gonna pour it out or wash it away or anything it could come in handy later when this vine gets really really big and then I can just uh, overflow that bin so it'll never be thirsty but I'm wondering if these little fragments are actually trying to regenerate because I think these leaves have gotten bigger. That could just be based off nutrition in the existing stem, but I'm starting to think that's not the case.